My name is Robert Lee, and I'm speaking to NASA astrophysicist Taylor Hutchison about the first year of the James Webb Space Telescope operations. Um, so, Taylor, thanks for speaking to space.com. Um, can you explain how the James Webb Space Telescope has changed astronomy over the last 12 months? Oh, gosh, it's it's changed so much. It's it's funny. This is a telescope that we were anticipating for many, many years. And um, now that we have these data, it's really opened up, you know, the so much of the science that I do uh, wasn't possible before this telescope. Um, this observatory is kind of a, a feat of engineering and the kind of light that it probes in the universe has begun to uncover things that we've never been able to see before. And so it really has kind of revolutionized quite a bit of science um, just in its first year. So in your opinion, what's been the most important uh, piece of science that the James Webb Space Telescope's delivered in this first 12 months? I'm a little biased. Um, so uh, NASA has put out four science goals for this observatory, right? Um, one of them happened to be the first stars and galaxies. So trying to look back in time as far as we possibly can to see some of these first galaxies that ever formed. And that's also happens to be my science. And so I'm very biased in the, the cool things that we've had come out from that kind of science. And the one that's gotten really exciting is we're continuing to push the threshold of how far back in time can we see? How distant galaxies can we find? And we found really, really far away ones. And I think that's probably the most exciting part to me is we're continuing to push the limits of, okay, how much further can we go? How much can we push this telescope to see as far as we possibly can? So what makes the James Webb Space Telescope the ideal instrument to look back in time in this way? Yeah, so the JWST is focused in a kind of light called infrared light. And I like to describe it also as, you know, kind of heat vision. It's, it's thermal light. And so we all kind of glow in the infrared. The Earth glows in the infrared. Anything warm of any amount glows in the infrared. And but what's really fascinating is the light that you see from distant galaxies in space um, they're glowing in all kinds of light. Um, it's the full electromagnetic spectrum, as we would call it. But as the further away in you go from a galaxy, the longer it takes that light to reach you. And so you have this interesting stretching in space time that happens. And so some of the first light you might see from these galaxies emitted in like the ultraviolet or something, some other portion of light. But by the time it reaches our telescopes, it's in the infrared. And that's a really important concept when you're trying to find the most distant galaxies ever because that's the first light you'll see and it pops up in the infrared. And this is why JWST is such a powerful instrument and an observatory because it is meant for that. I mean, it has gold plating on the mirrors for that reason. It's meant for the infrared. And so it's really, really good at what it does. So are you happy with the public perception of the James Webb Space Telescope and how people have really got excited about the results that it's been delivering? Yeah, it's been beautiful, actually. I mean, I I grew up being obsessed with the, the Hubble Space Telescope and the Spitzer Space Telescope, you know, any of these beautiful images that you'd see. And, you know, people make them into bed sheets and posters and car wrappings. You know, like it's, it's really beautiful to see the obsession that people have with these amazing images. And now that we have JWST and the very beautiful data from it, it's, I mean, it's just exquisite. And so it's, it brings me lots of joy to see how excited the public is about it because, I mean, this is this is a telescope for everyone. And so it's really it's really great to see that kind of joy and, and excitement. So during this first 12 months of operations, is there anything that surprised or shocked you? Yeah, uh, this might be silly, but, uh, you know, every time you put a new telescope in space, um, you're going to have new technology on it. Right. You're going to have better instrumentation so the cameras are literally better you have crisper images you're able to do more with the the types of instruments and sensitivity that you have and so we kind of already expected when we launched this telescope into space that we would have you know crisper images they'd be better it's a bigger telescope it'll be able to see a little bit better than hubble space telescope could but really i was blown away by how good this telescope is um, if you just happen to stare at any place in the universe with this telescope you will see things that we weren't expecting to see. This telescope is more sensitive and, and better than we were even expecting from measurements that we had in laboratories. And so that's kind of blown me away. Literally just, it's doing better than we ever expected. So have you been impressed by the results that 
the James Webb Space Telescope's delivered within the solar system as well as, you know, these much further and earlier galaxies. Yes, yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's so, I mean, like I said, I'm, my science is focused on the first galaxies, but it is really beautiful to see just kind of the broad range of, of power that this observatory has. And these images, like I know the most recent one of Saturn is just stunning. It's, it's striking how multifaceted we can use this observatory with science and how beautiful the detail you can get of, of the weather and atmospheres on the planets in our own solar system and the rings of Saturn and the detail you can see in them. It really is all of my friends who work in uh, or colleagues who <laughs> work in exoplanets and planets in our solar system are incredibly overjoyed by, by the level of data that they have and, and the things that they can do now that they could not before. So if I put you on the spot and asked you what your favorite image that the James Webb Space Telescope has delivered thus far, what would your answer be? It's such a hard answer because I do like a lot of them. Um, okay, so if you were to really force me to do this, um, I would actually say that as much as I love all of the images that we've seen, um, I'm, I'm obsessed with a thing called spectroscopy, which is kind of like a light fingerprint. And so it's it's different than an image, but it tells you a lot more about the, like the chemistry inside of these galaxies and like what kind of stars live inside of them. And, you know, how many, if there's black holes inside and how old are they? And, you know, it's really beautiful, the kind of physics you can pull out um, using this, you know, this light fingerprint. And so really the thing that uh, I was most obsessed with is actually a year ago when we had, you know, the first images being shown, they showed a spectrum. Um, this is that light fingerprint I was talking about. And I think I was taking my cat to the vet that day and I had to pull over and cry because it was just exquisite. It was so beautiful. And so I think that's actually, that's actually my favorite, which is not an image, but you know, that's, that's where I'm obsessed. So what about the image that's been released today that kind of sheds new light on Starburst in a relatively close uh, star forming galaxy. Can yeah. you tell us what we can see in that image and why it's so important for, for what is ahead in the second year of the James Webb Space Telescope? Yeah, yeah this is the closest star forming region um, to us. And the really beautiful thing is that you're seeing, um, so I'm looking at the image right here too. <laughs> um, it's just, it's exquisite. Let, let's start with that. This is the, the resolution you see in the crispness of this image is really, speaking to the power of this massive, beautiful telescope that we have in space. And so what you're seeing here is you, first of all, you have these, you know, these darker areas in this cloud that are really thick and there's dust here and shrouding these baby stars that are forming. Like they're still in the process of forming and we're able to kind of see that and, and see the dust that's enshrouding them. And then if you look at the brighter regions, what you're seeing is, you know, a star that's a little bit more massive than our sun that's really carving out the dust in that region. And so you're seeing essentially just this really chaotic very awesome messy system where you have stars forming of many different sizes, both bigger than our sun and smaller than our sun and the size of our sun and, and just kind of the chaotic system that, that entails. And the really cool thing about the JWST is that it's able to peer through gas and dust that other telescopes looking at different other kinds of light can't do. Like that HST could not do this the way that JWST can. And so it's, it, it's an exquisite image and it's, it's really kind of showing the the power of this observatory in a way that nothing else has been able to do. So second year of operations, what are you most excited about? Yeah, I'm a little, uh, this, will, this will be a weird answer, but I'm honestly, uh, there's every time we've had a new observatory get into space or like this new, really amazing thing. Like I mentioned before, you know, we have new instrumentation, you know, usually it's the newest technology at the time, always better than its predecessors. I'm really excited for finding something that we're not expecting. Because every time we put a new telescope into space, we always, we find the science goals that we were expecting, but there's always something else that we weren't expecting that we find and we're surprised by, and it's kind of changed something that we've understood about the universe and about science. And that's what I'm really looking forward to in this second year is what are we gonna find that completely shocks us and that we weren't expecting that really changes the way that we interpret the universe. So there's going to be a lot of young future astronomers watching this this video. What's your message to them about this period in history that the James Webb Telescope's really created? Yeah, I think I think we're definitely moving towards a, a field where you know anyone can get involved in science if they want to, and also just continue to be inspired by it and and follow your passions uh, where they where they take you. And I think that 
the more people that are excited about this observatory and, and the data they're coming out, I, I think it's beautiful. And, and I fully support kind of exploring these data and, and just having fun wandering through the images. There's a lot of collaborations that have been sharing the really big galaxy images, and you can literally zoom in and just kind of explore a part of the universe by just zooming around. And I, I think that's such a beautiful thing. And it, it kind of encourages that wonder that sometimes is, is kind of hard to refine. And so I think, yeah, just kind of staying curious and, and really like pursuing the things that bring you joy and bring you curiosity. So would you say the best is yet to come for the James Webb Space Telescope? 100%, yes. I think as long as this telescope continues to take data, which, you know, based on our current estimates will be a very long time, um, there will continue every year, I think, to be more kind of groundbreaking science that comes out of it. And so we're going to continue to find more things about this universe that we just never knew before. And that's very exciting. Thank you so much for speaking to space and can't wait to see what the James Webb Space Telescope delivers next year. Thank you so much. This was very fun. <laughs>